Hey guys, my name is Michael and welcome back to my channel. So, as you can probably see from the title, today is going to be a very different video and about an issue that is very important to me and close to my heart. After a lot of thought and consideration today, I am breaking the silence and I've decided to share with you guys the story of how I recovered from anorexia. It's honestly not something I like to talk about with many people, even the people who are really close to me, and I just feel like it's time to start sharing my story and to not be ashamed of that anymore. This video is partly in honor of National Eating Disorders Awareness Week, which is happening from February 26th to March 4th. At least 30 million people in the U.S. suffer from some type of form of an eating disorder and it also has the highest mortality rate over any other mental illness. God healed me in a way that I never thought was possible. My hope is that through this video, other people will be encouraged in recovery and just whatever you're facing to know that there is hope and you don't have to stay in that dark place that you're in right now. So before I really get into my story, I'm just going to address what an eating disorder actually is and why people get them. An eating disorder is a real mental illness. It can be brought on by many different things. There are many types of eating disorders, ranging from anorexia to bulimia to binge eating disorder to eating disorders otherwise not specified. However, the one thing all eating disorders do have in common is that the person has an unhealthy thought process about food and their body image negative thoughts about themselves. No one chooses to have an eating disorder. It is not a choice. It's not a lifestyle. It's not something that someone does because they're conceited or because they want attention. It is an actual real disease. So before I give you guys a little bit of insight onto how my eating disorder developed, I actually need to go back further than that and explain some medical complications that I was having several years prior to all that started. So when I was 12, I suffered from very severe stomach aches. I went from doctor to doctor, we tried all kinds of medicines and tests, and we just could not find what was wrong. In 2010, my stomach aches literally got so bad that I couldn't eat without just feeling horrible. So it was because of that that I actually started to be afraid of food because, I mean, I didn't want to have a stomach ache. At that point, I did not have a true eating disorder, However, my stomach aches and my inability to eat made me lose a lot of weight and I got to a really unhealthy place where I had to be placed in the hospital for three months. During that period of hospitalization, the doctors still couldn't find out what was wrong. Though they did not diagnose me with an eating disorder back then, as I was getting better, the doctors thought the best thing for me would be to stay at the children's eating disorder clinic that they had at the hospital. I was completely against the idea at first because I was like, okay, I don't want to stay at this place with a bunch of crazy people who don't even have the same issues and medical complications that I'm struggling with. I basically thought I was going to be living with a bunch of crazy kids for three months, but that was not the case at all. The kids I met there were some of the most incredible, sweet, strong, just really amazing people. So anyway, after my three months there, my stomach aches. I can't even explain what happened, but they went away as my body learned to accept food again. But I guess you could say the time I was in the eating disorder unit was the first time I was like exposed to eating disorders because prior to that I had no idea what one actually was. So fast forward a few years later and I was about to be a sophomore in high school. That summer I had just gone on a mission trip to Peru. I was growing spiritually. My life was great to be honest. However, when school started back up again, I just started to be stressed out and I struggled with a lot of anxiety and just insecurities that I had kept hidden to myself for a really long time. A month after school had started that year, all these things just really caught up to me very quickly and I found myself depressed and just feeling alone and just unhappy with myself. In addition to that, I also had this weird, crazy idea that, hey, maybe it wouldn't be so bad if I lost a little weight. I mean, why not? So I slowly began restricting what I ate, counting calories, and things just quickly spiraled out of control very fast. It's kind of crazy though, because during that time, I remember the eating disorder starting, I knew that something wasn't right. Like. I knew what I was doing was hurting me, but I never could see that it was an eating disorder. I didn't want to believe that I had an eating disorder because I had seen what that had done to the girls that I had made friends with when I was hospitalized, and I saw how it had just like sucked the life out of them. I felt like I was someone who a lot of people thought had their lives together when that wasn't the case at all. And 
So in my head, I thought, well, surely I can't get an eating disorder. I was a leader in the youth group. I was a girl who led Bible studies at school and went on mission trips. For a long time, I was ashamed to admit the truth because I felt like if I told anyone, they would either misunderstand me or look down upon me and judge me. And I didn't want that. And when I say I was restricting, I mean that I was like skipping meals and counting every calorie that went into my mouth, whether it was like ketchup or jelly. What I was doing was not normal. Now looking back, I think one of the things that makes me the most sad is that my eating disorder took away so many of the things that I enjoy. Like when it started, I lost interest in the things I really liked like music and choir and hanging out with friends and going to the movies. I had also almost stopped reading my Bible completely. My mind was just constantly consumed by lies that Satan was telling me, and for a long time I believed them. In December 2013, about a week before Christmas, I was admitted to the same hospital where I had spent three months of my life when I was 12. It was definitely a place I never expected to end up again. The main goals of inpatient treatment are basically to get you to a place where you want to recover, but also to help you recover physically. So when I was in treatment, obviously the things I was working on was how to eat normally again and how to view food in a healthy way and also learning to distinguish my thoughts from my eating disordered thoughts. So to be honest, for the first few weeks I was there, I was completely against recovery. It was not something I wanted at all. In a really twisted way, I didn't think I deserved recovery because I hadn't met my goal weight I had set for myself while losing weight, and I didn't see myself as physically sick. And giving up my eating disorder meant giving up that sense of control that I felt and again, in a twisted way, that sense of accomplishment that the eating disorder gave me. It wasn't until about half a month into treatment that I even began thinking about recovery, but I remember the day it kind of dawned on me, like, how did I get here? Jesus said to love others and treat them the way you treat yourself. But if I treated others the way that I treat myself right now, it would be horrible. It dawned on me that I shouldn't be losing my values just because I want to lose weight. Treatment was a really long, hard process, but eventually I came to a place where I began to consider recovery, which was a huge step in itself. So after about the two months I spent in inpatient treatment, I came home, and though I was not fully recovered, I was at least in a place where I wanted to want to get better. And for a long time, that was my prayer, that God would just give me at least the desire to get rid of this eating disorder that was holding me back from so much in my life. For a while, I was doing really well, but it wasn't even a few weeks after I had gotten out of treatment that Satan really got a hold of my mind again, and I kind of fell into a small relapse. It was a very short relapse, but I will say that that period of time was definitely one of the darkest points I've ever been in in my life. It was a very dangerous mindset I was in. I had basically come to a point where I hit rock bottom and I actually think through that it was a wake-up call and it made me realize I can't live like this anymore. I don't want to live like this anymore. But by the grace of God, he put some people in my life who really helped me to get through that time. Finally, after I hit rock bottom, I made the decision to commit to recovery because I was done living like this. I began to put this intense desire in my heart to seek him because for so long I felt so distant from him to where I couldn't hear his voice anymore. And that scared me to be honest. I just longed for his presence again. From that point on, I began immersing myself in scripture and constantly, constantly reading the Bible and meditating on those scriptures that combated all these negative thoughts that I was having. I began challenging myself every day to eat foods that scared me. I also wrote a list of the reasons why I wanted to recover so I could stay motivated. I wanted to be able to go to a restaurant and not be afraid to order something. I wanted to be able to eat cake on my birthday and to not live in bondage to numbers and calories. I wanted to feel happy again and be able to travel and go to college and have better relationships with the people in my life. So after I had committed to all that, I began doing so much better. I mean, obviously, I still definitely had those hard days. In April 2014, I went to Gateway Church's women's conference called Pink Impact. In just those two days at that conference, God did such miraculous healing in my heart and in my mind. It was like a complete 360 shift in my thinking. That first night in worship at the conference, there was just this really powerful moment when you could hear all these women singing along to the song, Great I Am. 
and there's a lyric in that song where it says, the mountains shake before him, the demons run and flee at the mention of your name, King of Majesty. There is no power in hell or any who could stand against the power and the presence of the great I am. In that moment, the room came alive and it was just like God's presence was so, so tangible. And I truly believe it was then that God just broke chains off of me. I remember that Carrie Job was also leading worship during that night and she said something that blew my mind. She quoted a scripture that says, you are the righteousness of Christ. And during that time, I did not feel righteous at all. I felt dirty, guilty, ashamed. In that moment, it was like God was breaking through my darkness and pouring in his light. And I grasped for the first time who I really was in him. At that conference, it was like God reached down and touched me. And when he touches you, your stuff will stop. That anxiety you're struggling with, that depression you're struggling with, God can take those things and break those chains off you. He has the power to stop and start things in your life if you let him. After that, I made such incredibly quick progress in recovery, and I can only say that it was through the power of God. Now, I realize that in my case, God really has blessed me because oftentimes, when you're recovering from something as destructive as an eating disorder, it will take months and months and maybe even years and years to ever reach that place of the healing or that place where you even want to get better. But I'm here to tell you that there is hope. You can get better. You don't have to struggle with this forever. You do not have to have this the rest of your life, despite what other people tell you. And I'm living proof of it. Today, by the grace of God, I can confidently say that I'm completely free of my eating disorder. It no longer has any hold on me. Recovery is definitely a long process and it's hard work, but it is so, so worth it. If you are struggling with an eating disorder or depression or anxiety, then don't be afraid to seek out those people in your life who can help you. Whether that's a trusted mentor, a teacher, even a counselor, like don't be afraid to get the help that you need. We all have our problems. We all struggle with our stuff. It's just that I think a lot of the times today, we don't know what other people are struggling with because we don't want to talk about it. God is such a good God. He loves you and he wants the best for your life. There is nothing that's too hard for him. There's no mountain that he can't move. In Jesus Christ, you are an overcomer and there is nothing that you can't overcome through the power of God in your life. So, I think that's gonna be it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I put a lot of effort and thought into it and I hope that it inspires and encourages some of you guys out there. I definitely want to do more of these types of videos because I feel like I have a lot to say about these issues and these topics. And real quick, if you want to get notified when new videos are posted, you can do that by clicking the subscribe button down below. It only takes two seconds and it really does help me out a lot. I am at Michael underscore Faith on Twitter and at Michael Faith on Instagram. <laughs>